I apologize if my chair is squeaky because <laughs> I need a new chair. I got this from a dumpster, not a dumpster, next to the dumpster. Hello all, this is Amara and welcome to my very first YLK Knits podcast episode. Um, I think this is going to be the one <laughs> because I've actually already filmed an entire episode um, weeks ago and I wasn't happy with it, um, which is okay because I think honestly this is a new thing for me and I needed to kind of get I think that first struggle take out of the way, um, get some of those nerves and stuff out. Um, I know everybody says this and it's kind of obvious, but it's really hard talking to a camera when you're not used to it. And it's also kind of hard to like sit alone in your room and talk to a camera when you know that like the other people you live with can hear you <laughs> outside in the rest of the house. So, but <laughs> I'm going to try to work past it. Just for a quick about me, um, my name is Amara. I'm 22. I'm a recent college graduate, which is a new thing for me, scary thing for me. Um, I live in the United States on the West Coast and I'm an artist and a designer. Um, I went to school for graphic design and motion graphics. I've been an artist forever and I'm also a crafter. So I just love all things art and design related. Um, I've been crocheting since I was a young teenager, so for a very long time, and I only recently, like this year in the past few months, um, decided to learn to knit, um, which has been really, really fun. It's something I actually did try back when I was a young teenager, and I couldn't get the hang of it, and I kind of just like gave up and was like, it's just this isn't for me, but I think that Obviously, I'm only 22, so it's not, I'm not that far from when I was a teenager, but I already feel like I have a lot more patience at this age than I did when I was like 15. And so it's made learning to knit um, a much more enjoyable experience this time around than it was the first time. So eventually, my hope for this podcast is it could be related to other art and design adjacent material. Um, but today and for a while, I'm probably just going to keep it to the fiber arts. Um, so just crochet and knitting. I think I already got the introductions out of the way. So should we just, should we just hop right into it? I think so. Um, you have no idea how excited I am to talk about the things I've been working on and the things that have just been floating around in my brain about yarn and knitting and crochet. So let me refer to my notes. Up first is my finished objects or projects that I've completed. I I don't know if I should get right into controversial opinions, but I just, A, on one hand, I love learning all the lingo that goes into like the knitting podcast community and scene. It's fun. You know, it makes me feel like I'm a part of something. But on the other hand, it's kind of, I don't know. I feel like you don't always have to use the lingo. I feel like in some ways it can make it feel exclusive and a little inaccessible to everybody, especially to like beginners. But that, ugh, that's a conversation for another day. Don't, just a thought, just a thought. <laughs> Anyways, my first fin completed project is these. Um, what are they, you might ask? <laughs> um, so they were intended to be bowl cozies, you know, like a hot pad that wraps around a bowl straight out of the microwave or something like that. Because I, I have like handmade sewn ones of bowl cozies and I love them. Bowl cozies have like changed my life. I love a bowl cozy. So I wanted to make some for Mother's Day. Oh, that's the other thing. These are belated Mother's Day gifts. Do not judge me. I have a very busy life. Okay. So these were intended to be bowl cozies. Um, Obviously, they don't have a lot of structure to them, um, and that's my bad. Um, I didn't cho choose the right yarn for this project. Um, this pattern that I worked from is by my alpaca studio on Etsy, and the recommended yarn is um, sugar and cream cotton, so it's worsted, um, and I think 
two strands held together of that worsted weight sugar and cream cotton. I did not use that. I used um, Lion Brand Kobu yarn for these, which is a cotton blend. So it's cotton and um, bamboo rayon, I think. It's like a pretty even, it's like, it's like 49, 51% or something like that. So the result is this very drapey fabric, which isn't, it's nice, but not what I was going for. But you know, that, again, that was kind of my bad. I, you live and you learn, you know, but they're still very, very cute. So I think they can still totally be used as like a hot pad that you like can set on the table you know, and then put a pot on it and they're cute or just like little hot pads. They're cute still. Okay. So, um, I'll have which colors these are. Um, I'll have all of the patterns that I use, all of the yarn and colorways and stuff, all those details in the description box. So don't worry if I forget to say something, it, that information will be in the description box. So this so again, I don't remember the names of these colorways, but um, something I added, a little twist, was I put in these little hearts. I sewed these in. Um, there was actually another one of these that I completed uh, actually around Mother's Day um, for my aunt. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why don't I say aunt? I've never said aunt in my life. My aunt. <laughs> That was silly. Anyways, um, for hers, it was like this, but cut reverse. So it was mostly this light blue. And then the, I did one single heart in the dark blue. Um, and it was really rushed. And I didn't like the tutorial that I used to make the heart. Oh, so I'll link the tutorial I used to make this heart. It was a lot simpler. I liked it a lot better. But because my original vision was to do one heart in the middle, um, and yeah, so I ended up going with this little three hearts and I actually like it better. I think it's cute. I think it's really dainty. It's very granny core, very grandma aesthetic. Um, but I love that. It's cute. So this one is for my grandmother and I will be mailing that to her. And this one is for my mother and I will be mailing that to her as well. I had intended to have these done by Mother's Day cause I was gonna see everybody in person. Um, my grandmother lives a few towns away from me and my mom lives in another state, back in my home state. Um, so I don't get to see them in person all the time. So I was trying to have something done cause I was seeing them around Mother's Day and it just didn't happen, which is okay, you know, they're still getting them obviously. So these are the only completed objects that I have um, currently. I, I was about to say for like, this month, but I'm not sure how frequently I want to make these. I'm bi-weekly is kind of ideal for me, but I, I, <laughs> I have a busy schedule. I don't know. We'll see where it fits in. We'll see if I even like it at all. I hope I like it, but now we're moving on to whips. My first whip. I'm very, very excited to talk about. My very first whip is the Typical Tank by Tiffany Liu or Tiffany Bliss. Um, she's on YouTube, Instagram, all that. Um, I love her content. And this, this pattern came out fairly recently, um, a couple months ago. I actually started making it a couple months ago. And then it kind of fell on the back burner. And then this month I made a plan to actually get as close to finishing it as I could this month. Um, I'm still not quite there, but let me just show you my progress. Let me stick. <laughs> this is my progress on the typical tank. So I've done the front shoulders and front body and right now I'm working, I finished the back shoulders and I'm working on the back body um, before the entire body will eventually be connected in the round. Um, Here's the thing about this. A, I love this project so much. Like, I feel like it looks ugly, <laughs> right? Like this. I don't know if I'm being too hard on myself, but 
I just have a feeling it's going to turn out so good. Like I see the vision. It's like very much a trust the process sort of thing. Um, where do I start with this? Okay, this yarn is classic elite yarns in the color Firefly, and it is a linen and viscose blend. Um, so in the pattern, I, th I believe the recommended yarn is like knitting for all of pure silk. So like two fingering strands held together to make kind of like a DK weight. Um, and like something silk. Um, I, when I, so I bought this yarn from my local yarn shop and I went in with the intention of buying some sort of silk blend. Um, but the woman there recommended me this instead, this linen, and I really like it. The only thing about this yarn is that Classic Elite Yarns no longer manufactures yarn, so it's completely discontinued. You can't get it. I mean, you can get it like on eBay and stuff, but you know, um, so I bought all of the yarn they had in this color because they had eight 50 gram skeins and I just bought all of them. So it's about 400 grams, um, which should be enough. I am knitting the XL size, kind of. <laughs> Here, See, there's a few things about this. Um, a, this is the first garment I've ever knitted. Like I said, I'm very, very new to knitting. I just started this year and um, I haven't made, I actually haven't made anything. <laughs> that sounds crazy, but I haven't completed anything. Um, I'm very close, well on my way, but I, I don't actually have any finished knitted objects to show at all, um, but I'm working on it. So this might be a bit ambitious for my first um, garment ever but at the same time this pattern is written really well and so clearly that it is so easy for me to follow and like I'm a beginner beginner so 10 out of 10 recommend this pattern um the other thing is because I'm using this yarn is only one strand and it's a sport weight um kind of it it's one of those where it gets thick sometimes and then thins back out I don't know I know there's a word for it, I just can't think of it, but um, it does that. So for the most part, it's a sport weight, which... Anyways, so I knit a gauge swatch for this and my gauge was off. So I think it was supposed to be like, like 24 stitches by 36 rows in a, a four centimeter, no, 10 centimeter square. And my gauge was like 26 stitches by like 40, something rose. So my gauge is pretty small, but I liked the fabric that it made so, so much like this. I like this so much that I was like, I'm just going to stick with it. So I like, I YouTubed because I was like, I know there's a way that you can do math to make your gauge still work with the pattern, even if your gauge is different than the pattern's gauge. And so I through YouTube discovered the rule of proportion and that's what, so I've come up with my little magic number um, that I use to do my math to follow the pattern according to my gauge. So that is coming with its own trial and error because I am slightly concerned about the fit only because I have a pretty large chest and when I like hold it up I'm worried it's going to be, it's going to sit awkwardly. Like I'm worried it's not wide enough. Um, but I'm just kind of trudging along and hoping that it'll all work out in the end. And if it's so bad that I can't stand it, I will rip it and I will try it again because I will, I need this tank top in my life. I, it. A, do you see the screen? I don't know if it's gonna show up well because my setup is not the best, but it's beautiful. Um, I'm having a great time working on this. Um, is there anything else to say? I think that's about it for the typical tank. Um, I really recommend the pattern. Again, I'll have it linked below 
it won't have the yarn linked because you can't really buy it but I'll have the information about it below as well so that's going really well um I was hoping to have the back body done by this week and then I'd work on the body all next week and then I'd spend the next week doing up um the ribbing and finishing it so we'll see I'm kind of on track it's Wednesday now so I have another four days to get through the back body. We'll see. <sighs> Moving on. My next current whip is also something I'm really excited about, but I'm excited about everything. So I don't know. I'm going to say it for everything though still because I'm just so excited. I'm just enjoying myself so much. So this next whip is a pair of socks. And this is the very first pair of socks I've ever knitted. Um, are you sensing a theme here? <laughs> a lot of firsts for me, um, which is exciting. Um, I'm, I love learning how to do all this so much. So socks, this pattern I'm using is my favorite socks by Ruinbein, um, or Kristen, hold on, Kristen Leher, Leher. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll put it on the screen. I'll have it all linked down below. Um, but so I found this sock pattern on YouTube. It's actually a video tutorial, a very in-depth, long video tutorial that has a written up pattern that accompanies it. Um, so that is um, the pattern I decided to use for my first pair because it was so in-depth and having that clear visual has really helped me like grasp the concepts that are necessary in sock knitting like heels and gussets and blah 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 so um this heel is or oh, here what am I doing yarn let's start with yarn this yarn is cascade yarns heritage paint sock yarn so it's a um, 75% superwash mineral wool and 25% nylon. I believe this colorway is called succulent. I could be wrong. I bought this yarn at a local craft shop that is sadly closing, um, but everything was 20% off. So I snagged this because it was so pretty in the hank. I'll, I might put a picture up of the hank because it was so pretty. And I love the way it is knitting up. Just, just as pretty variegated green pink yarn. Um, I did a two by two rib for the cuff and it's a reinforced heel flap and gusset heel. Um, so you can see I'm pretty well on my way to finishing this first one. Um, I'm, about, I'm about halfway through the foot. Um, that's where I'm at with the sock. Um, I was hoping to already be done with the first sock and to start the next sock this week, but obviously I'm not quite there yet, which is fine. Um, I might just cast on the second one anyways, just to get it rolling, but we'll see. So if you've never knit socks before, like me, no, <laughs> um, I do highly recommend Blue and Vine's um, YouTube tutorial. Super, super helpful. Sorry this is like unorganized. I, I have like a whole thing in notes, but I just feel like my mind keeps bouncing back and forth. Um, so those are my socks. They're coming a long way. Oh, the thing about these socks are the thing. See, that's the thing. I feel like I've been saying that a lot. There's quite a few mistakes, but I'm okay with it. Um, I've got a bit of a laddering going on. It's very minimal but it's still there you know if you look closely on the leg just because I wasn't tugging um these are knit magic loop and I wasn't I just wasn't tugging tight enough when continuing on to the next needle the other thing is right here at the top of the foot I've got like it's like a hole slash ladder situation I don't know what happened there. Um, I think I might be able to tighten it up once the sock is done. Um, it, and it's an unfortunate mistake because it's pretty noticeable. It's right there on the top of the foot. But at the same time, it'll all be okay. 
And then the only other mistake is um, if you can see here um, where this gusset, these where these decreases are for the gusset, it makes like a nice little line right there where you can see where all the decreases are. On the other side, I messed up where to do the decreases. So there, it it's totally like there's random lines where you can see where the decreases are and they don't line up like at all because I did it wrong, but now I know. So um, that's also something that I feel like is different about me now versus just a few years ago is I'm like a lot more comfortable with my mistakes and my growing pains in um, learning something new. Um, something about me is, <laughs> my mom always says this, <laughs> but I tend to, I don't know how to say this without, <laughs> um, I, I'm a very quick learner and I tend to be pretty good at new things that I learn and I try. Um, I'm just, I'm really good at grasping concepts quickly and figuring things out and problem solving. And so I tend to pick things up rather quickly. And so if I, in the past, if I, or maybe even still today, if I don't get it like right away, I get frustrated and I just abandon it. Um, which isn't happening with knitting. Like obviously there's there's a lot of growing pains because I just started learning. But I also really enjoy the figuring it out process of it. Um, as I am a problem solver, I do identify that as like one of my really strong suits about myself. So even though like I'm really happy with myself that I can look at the sock and notice all the mistakes and flaws and be okay with it. That being said, <laughs> There was a point in my typical tank where I had knitted like a solid couple inches in the front body and I realized like I had too many stitches on my needles and there was a bunch of weird spots in the and I had ripped back like several inches not several a, few, a couple because I was just like, I feel like I just need to start this again. So there's kind of like a happy medium of like being able to live with your mistakes and knowing when like maybe you should just try again. Moving on to my next whip or uh, project that I'm working on currently is a long term project that will continuously show up in these um, throughout the months. And that is my temperature blanket for 2022. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the concept, a temperature blanket is, um, well, it's a blanket. <laughs> and the color palette is based off of a range of temperatures that then correspond to daily or weekly temperatures, you know, in an area, either your current area or um, what have you. So I, had discovered temperature blankets, you know, um, around the end of last year, I think, or beginning of this year. And I was like, those look so fun. Like, I really like the, um, it's like a tracker, you know, I like that it's like recording a moment in time and I like that aspect. Um, but the thing for me was, um, I found recording the temperature every day kind of boring. Um, and no hate, you know, if you are making a temperature blanket and you love it and you find it really super interesting, like, I love that for you. <laughs> I just wasn't super interested in recording um, the temperature every day, but I wanted to make something similar. So I decided to make a mood blanket for 2022, um, wherein I record my mood at the end of every single day. And then I have a color palette and a bunch of yarns that correspond to a set amount of moods um, that I'm using in my blanket. So I am a little bit behind. So today is what? Today's Wednesday, June 15th. Um, and obviously a mood blanket isn't or or a temperature slash mood blanket is intended to record a whole year. Um, 
And so I've been trying to work on it month to month. I kind of lost some of my mojo on it for a couple months there. So I'm kind of playing a game of pat catch up right now. So I have three squares completed. So let me go ahead and show you. And right now it's in whips, but in the future, I'd like to just include that month's square or whatever previous month in the finished objects, completed projects portion of the podcast, I think. We don't need to get that ahead of ourselves though. So, um, I think, Yes, so this, I don't know if you can see the whole thing, is one of my squares. This is my January square. Um, the yarn I'm using for my project is Hobby slash Hobie. I still cannot figure out what is the correct pronunciation because I hear both. So Hobby, Hobie, the Danish yarn company. <laughs> Um, this is their Amigo XL yarn, which is their 100% HB acrylic. Um, I think it's worsted. The XL one is worsted. Um, so it's a 100% what? This is 100% acrylic yarn, and I went with that yarn for this project because at the time when I bought it, you know, early January or earlier this year. Um, they, Hobby in general has pretty good sales going on a lot of the time. And I knew since I needed a lot of yarn for a whole blanket that it needed to be something fairly affordable because I, I, I work minimum wage. Okay. <laughs> like I do not have all the money in the world. So, um, this was at a really good price when I bought it, like $2 skein or something. So I'm um, their 50 gram skeins and they had a wide range of colors to choose from, which I needed because, you know, I was like, I wanted to find the perfect colors for every mood. Um, I did film a project video specific, or I, I filmed like an unboxing video and then also a video explaining my mood blanket and going through all the colors I chose and why I chose them and what moods they correspond to and kind of my thought process behind this blanket and what I, my intentions with it. And I think I might still end up posting that. Um, but yeah, for more information on like what color specifically I'm using, you can go to my Ravelry. Um, I have all of it linked in there too. So that be so I guess the only other thing or nothing again this is the January square um February I haven't weaved in all these ends yet so you can see they all look similar but a little bit different and this square I just completed is March so I only have as far as March completed and it's June right so I have like two and a half, it's the middle of June, two and a half squares to catch up on, which is reasonable to me, honestly. They're they're pretty quick. Obviously, it's kind of a granny square style. Oh, this is crochet, by the way. I don't know if that was obvious because I didn't say it, but um, I'm doing this crochet. I love crochet blankets. I love making crochet blankets. They're like, <laughs> I almost said they're my love language. Like if I have ever, I haven't made many, but if I make you, a crochet blanket is because I love you and you are one of the most important people in the world to me. <laughs> so they're a labor of love for sure, but I love making them. Um, so this is like kind of granny square style. So the first few um, rounds go a lot quicker than the last few, right? Because more stitches. Um, the pattern I'm following is TL Yarn Crafts or Tony Lipsy's her um, temperature blanket 2021 pattern. So this is the linen stitch granny square, um, which I also followed the TL Yarn Crafts tutorial to learn how to do. And this pattern is basically made up um, of 12 squares, one large square per month, wherein you have one row per day plus two. Um, so each square is 33 rows and the intention for that is that so that there's always 
some type of border um, because each month has a different amount of days, right? Like January is 31, but February has 28. So if you just did one row per day, your squares would be different sizes because there's a different amount of rows. So the point of the extra two rows, 33 rows, is so that they all turn out the same size and there's like filler. So that's what this beige color is. It's just a filler color to get to the size it needs to be. So like this border, there's only two rows, but on February, there's like five or something. I'm not doing quick math, okay? So, um, I'm really enjoying this. Um, like I said, I'd kind of lost motivation to work on it for like a couple months there. Like I'd finished February and I was like, eh. but I'm back on it because I'm playing a game of catch up with myself right now. I want to get my whips to like a good spot. So finished March, gonna start April this week. Um, I've kind of been on like a try and do two rows a day, you know, more if you can. And that pretty much gets me up to speed with where I need to be. Um, so this project you'll be seeing a lot of. Again, it's a long term project. I won't be done with it until the beginning of 2023, obviously, because I need to record every day uh, my mood at the end of every day. So that'll take the full year and then sewing it all together. I'm thinking... It's acrylic, so I don't know if I necessarily need to block it, but I, well, I think I might block my squares as I go and start to sew them as I go, just to make it a little bit easier. Because that's a lot easier, right, than blocking an entire blanket, like where where am I going to put that? Versus if I just block each square and sew them together. You catch my drift? Um, the only other thing about, I keep saying that. <laughs> um, one more thing I wanted to say about this project is I recommend doing something like it. Um, even if you don't make something out of it, I've noticed that the act of me, I have a Google spreadsheet, a Google sheet, um, for my moods, um, for where I enter my mood for the day. So I have, you know, I have it all lined out March, April, May, and all the days. And at the end of every day, I go in and I just record my mood. And I've, I've, I've narrowed down my moods to like a list of like nine main moods I could have for a day. Um, you know, and that's specific to me. You could really only want like three or you could have like 15. Um, so I've noticed like nine that are kind of what I tend to feel. And the act of sitting there and thinking like what what how did I feel today you know how was today for me has been really interesting and reflective um especially in the past few months I've kind of gotten a little things have gotten a little interesting because I've started um here I have an example on this one I've started to have days that are such a mix of emotions that I can't possibly narrow it down to one. I have one day in here, um, towards the beginning here, that for the most part, that day was awesome. Um, this yellow color is my content color. That's like, I am happy right here, right now, where I am, I'm so happy. You know, that's what that color is for me. Um, this dark blue peacock color is my <laughs> emotional color, um, which is just like deep, deep sadness, crying, sobbing, awful feeling. Um, so I had a day that was mostly good, but at the end of it, it was awful. <laughs> um, and that's hard to express. So um, what I ended up doing was doing half of the row in one color and half in the other color. And I think I did that a little bit later too. Or I have some days on my sheet that I haven't crocheted yet that I have like, I've put like a blip of the color. So I plan on doing just like a few stitches in that round in that color. And just to, it, it makes it just even more specific. And my intention with this project, I, see, I, I said I was gonna do, I already have a whole video that I plan on posting about it, but I might not. And something 
that I just like about this project. And part of why I wanted to do it was I'm what I'm hoping is um, at the end of it, I'll be able to look back and think, well, there's two things I'm hoping will happen or one or the other, I guess, um, is that I'll look back and I'll realize that there were a lot more good days than bad. Um, obviously, bad days stick out a lot more to us than good days. That's just the way our brains work and it's unfortunate, but it's true. And I, you know, I, it, I think it'd be nice to have like a reminder that there really are more good days than bad, even if the bad ones stick out which is why my emotional color is like one of the most vibrant colors um, because it's it stands out, you know, as much as I hate that it does. Because um, then the other part of it is, for me specifically, the colors I chose to represent my more deeper moods or emotions, like very sad days or very scary days, very anxious days, um, I chose to choose really deep colors um, that create a high contrast with the rest of the palette. And so I know the palette looks kind of random. I like it. <laughs> and it's very specific to me. Listen, I'm a, des I'm a graphic designer. I know what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> um, because e even if I look back and maybe there are a lot of bad days, <laughs> you know, and it's not the first outcome I was hoping for, I'm hoping that I can still look at those bad days and appreciate that they all came together to make something beautiful. I know that sounds really cheesy, but I'm <laughs> I'm trying to take care of myself and my brain and my heart. So <laughs> this is something that's doing that for me and I really enjoy it. So give it a try if you haven't, you know. I know it's kind of halfway through the year now, so... Um, it could be kind of hard to start one since you have, the intention is that it's a whole year that you record, but it's never too late or you could start planning for next year or something like that. So <laughs> I don't know where I was going with all that, but that is my mood blanket 2022. <laughs> um, my last whip is something that I have not been working on currently but I planned on finishing it next month. So I want to get into it a little bit later, but I've kind of been inspired by the knitting community to like, kind of like make a plan and just kind of get, <laughs> get my whips and plans under control. Um, not that you have to, but I just thought it'd be helpful to me and I've seen it be helpful to others. And so that's something I've been trying out. And so I decided that to get where I want to be with all my current projects and like my long-term projects, I needed to put some aside and finish them later. So that's what this one is. And it is, do you, do you show the item first or say what it is first? Obviously there's not a right answer, but I'm still struggling to find which one I, works for me. Okay, this last whip is my checkered Tunisian tote bag. Quite a mouthful. Um, I don't know if that's its final name. This is a pattern self-drafted by me, except it's not that complicated. So I don't know if it's really, I don't know if I'd really call it a pattern. It's just a freestyle. <laughs> um, excuse me. When I show it to you now, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense what you're looking at basically here here's a story with this whip <laughs> um when i discovered when i discovered tl yarn crafts on youtube who's one of my favorite resources for crochet on youtube um it is at that same time i discovered tunisian crochet which i had never heard of before and it's basically just another type of crochet. I don't know all that much about the history of Tunisian crochet because I'm sure there is one um, and how it relates to normal crochet, standard crochet. Um, but I was super, super interested by it and I really wanted to try it. So, um, so I decided to try it and that's what this project is. It's me learning how to do Tunisian crochet. And so I had this yarn left over from 
another project that I was gonna do that I didn't end up doing and it's the um, Hobby Lobby's I Heart This Cotton Yarn. Um, <laughs> I feel like I should put a disclaimer out there because I I know about the controversies that surround Hobby Lobby. Um, Hobby Lobby is one of the most accessible craft stores to me currently as I'm not somebody who drives and I really rely on public transportation or getting rides to get to where I need to be. Um, and it's just one of the most accessible craft stores for me. So I tend to shop there, you know? Don't know if I'll include that, but so this yarn is from Hobby Lobby and it's 100% cotton. And so I was like, what can I make with this? And I had a few colors, so, um, and I liked the way they all looked together. And I really liked the idea of making something with checkers to get all the colors. And then I landed on a tote bag. So this is one of the panels. Um, this is a front and back panel completely done in Tunisian crochet. Something I love about this fabric is how crisp and clean the lines are between the color changes. Look at that. That's kind of hot. <laughs> Can I say that on YouTube? <laughs> um, anyway, something I wasn't anticipating is how dense this fabric is, but also it's supposed to be a bag. So that's probably a plus. Um, I, I've had a lot of fun actually kind of designing this because I actually spent a lot of time considering how I was going to do the checkers, which I know it's like, their checkers just do them. No, okay. I didn't know if I wanted them to be kind of more randomized or if I wanted them to follow a line like this, which this is what I ultimately um, ended up doing because the other way, because I kind of mocked it up. Um, I might be able to throw up some concept art of like what I'm thinking for this bag. Hi, we're back. Um, my camera died. <laughs> so I just charged the battery for an hour and I'm gonna try and oh, finish this. <sighs> I took a nap <laughs> while I waited for my camera to boot back up. But um, I believe I was last talking about this Tunisian crochet checkered tote bag and how um, Basically, it took <laughs> it took some like virtual mocking up to arrive at this design for the front and back panels. So obviously checkered. And earlier I was talking about how like one of the ways <sighs> earlier I was talking about how one of the ways I had like one of the one of the designs that I didn't end up going with looked more color blocky than checkered and I wanted checkered. So that's why I ended up going with this. But then the rest of the bag is color blocked. <laughs> um, so because I still have plenty of yarn left over of each of these colors and it was like, well, what do I do for the rest of the bag? So I've decided to go for color blocking the rest of the panels, um, the side panels, the bottom and the straps. So if, I have other panels already done, kind of, not really. Um, I have the bottom panel done. Here's the bottom panel, not much to look at. It's green. Um, and I have one of the side panels mostly done or halfway done, I don't even know. It's been a long time since I worked on this project, like I said. Um, so this is one of the side panels in that pink and then um, the other side panel, sorry if you can hear yard work outside, the other side panel is going to be yellow or white. I can't remember. I have a plan. So basically, there I'm using different colors from the palette for each panel um, to give it an overall color blocked look. Um, I think it's gonna be really cool. And so like one of the straps will be one color and the other strap will be another color. So it's really cool in my head. Um, one thing is that um, 
this panel again because I'm not following a pattern. This is just I self drafted this. I came up with this in neon nanyan. So um, I was trying to make perfect squares, and they're a little bit longer than they are wide, I think. And I also wanted at least I wanted <laughs> here I wanted five checkers going up and four across and it just turned out being a little bit it's just not as wide as I want it to be so I don't know if maybe through blocking I could get it to be just a tiny bit wider so it's just a little bit more proportional because right now it's just rather tall you know what I mean it's a little disproportionate it feels like to me anyways so I could always turn it sideways that's an option too. Um, yeah, so that's a project that I'm not going to be working on again until July when I hopefully wrap up some of these other projects like my typical tank and my socks and stuff in June. Because um, once I'm done crocheting all the panels, I'll need to sew it together and add a lining. Um, I just got a sewing machine. Um, I had a sewing machine as a teenager and it's back home in Alaska and, or in my home state. And so I didn't have one with me here, but my grandma just gifted me her old sewing machine. So that makes some things a lot easier, like lining this bag. I don't have to think about how the hell am I going to, well, I don't have to think about how the heck I'm, I'm going to do that without a sewing machine, you know, wait till I have access to a sewing machine, hand sew it. Well, it doesn't matter because I have a sewing machine now. So that's awesome. Um, that's where I'm at with all of my current projects. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to keep working and have more fun things to show you next time. Hopefully some new cast-ons and projects to show as well. It's a bad idea to film after a nap because my energy level has dropped quite a bit now, I feel like. And my voice is maybe a tiny bit raspier. Still a little groggy, but hopefully it's not too disconnected. On to my next segment, which is acquisitions. Acquisitions. <laughs> and things that I have bought and have come into my life. Um, craft related. Art. Knitting. Crochet related. That was kind of... You got what I mean. <laughs> Um, I bought quite a few things this month, so so I kind of have a lot to share, so I want to try to spend not too much time on these things. Um, I guess we'll just get right into it. First thing I wanted to show is this project bag I got from um, Joy Make Store on Etsy. Um, I couldn't see if they had an Instagram or anything, um, but I'll link their Etsy down below in this... Oh. But I'll link their Etsy shop down below. Anyways, it's just this large um, knitting bag, canvas bag. It's got the cutest little bee print on it. It's such a nice green. Um, I wanted a project bag, so I got one. It's kind of the story behind this. Um, I really like taking this out and about when I go run errands and I want to like turn it into a knitting date with myself or go to the park or something, this is what I take because I can put my project in it, but then I can also put other purse things in it, like my wallet, some lotion, stuff like that. So really, really love this bag. Very, very happy with it. What's next on my notes, guys? Mm. The other one, my next acquisition something I'm super, super excited about. Here, let me show you. I bought 52 weeks of socks. This is a big old book full of sock patterns. So, so excited. Um, Tiffany from Typical Bliss is a person who inspired me to buy this because um, I love watching her streams and she is always talking about this book it feels like and I just I really want to get into knitting socks you'll kind of see a little bit later I have I, I have plans to make socks <laughs> um so I thought this would be perfect to 
um, just get into it and have a bunch of really beautiful, interesting patterns. Um, I will say after reading through it, um, well, I, I obviously haven't read through the whole thing, but after flipping through it and looking at it, um, the only thing I wish is that there was more sizing. And I don't know if there's more sizing available through different means, potentially, or if there's a way to kind of do your own math to edit charts and stuff to fit larger sizes. But there's only two sizes per every sock in the book. Like it's like size one and size two. And I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're just women's sizes, like a small and medium or like small, medium to medium, large. Um, and I'd really like to be able to knit socks for all the people in my life. Um, and most of those people have larger feet. My parents, grandfather, grand, my parents, my grandparents, my siblings who are all taller than me, even though they're all younger than me. Um, and I don't know if that's something I'm going to be able to do with this book, considering it only carries like two sizes. Um, again, I, I don't, I'm not very experienced. Um, so there's probably ways I can like adjust the sizing to if I wanted it to fit a larger foot, but I just, you know, that was something that I was a little like, eh. but I'm still super, super excited to have this. It's also pretty. <laughs> um, yeah, I bought this at Powell's Bookstore in Portland, Oregon. Um, I was visiting Portland for a day. My sister really wanted to show me Powell's. She's a huge, like, book nerd, so she was really excited to take me there, and it was really cool. And the section I really wanted to go to most was the arts and crafts section. I was actually looking, I had this book in mind, and I found it, and there was only one, and now it's mine, so that's exciting. Let me put it back over here. Um, a couple other things I bought recently are some stitch markers that are hard to show here because they're tiny. And so I think I'll insert some pictures um, and I'll include the names of the Etsy shops that I bought them from. Both I bought from Etsy, so I'll get the specific sellers, but those are fun things. Um, for the most part, because up until this point, I've just been using those plastic um those like chunky colorful plastic stitch markers you know the ones I'm talking about from like Amazon and stuff I do like those um but when I I notice that when I get to like smaller needle sizes and um smaller or lighter yarn weight they're just too big at least I feel like they are so I got some nice still very very cute stitch markers that I think work better for like those smaller needle projects for me and I'm very, very happy with them. So yeah, um, I'll show a picture and I'll put links to them. Um, something else I got very recently, like a week or two weeks, all the time blends together that I bought are these Coco Knits Colorful Stitch Stoppers. Um, I almost dropped it. I wanted some stitch stoppers, so I got some. Um, I got these from my local yarn store which, you know, I've only been there twice. Um, cause they're kind of hard to catch when they're open. Cause they're only open like a few days a week in like the afternoon. So it's a cool shop though. And so the first time I went was actually to buy that yarn for my typical tank. And it was like dead. Like I was the only person in there. Um, and it was cool. But then this last time that I went, I took my, um, my new roommate, who's also my, my best friend from high school. Um, and it was busy people in and out the door. I was like, you know, good for them. But yeah, anyways, that's just a little anecdote. I bought these stitch stoppers there. They're so cute. They're hey, I bought these because it had a lot for different size needles, which I wanted. I didn't want to buy just like one pack for one size, one pack for another size. So this was a pretty good thing for me anyways, because I was looking for like a set that was fairly affordable. This was like $12 or something. Okay, these aren't the same size, but they're these foam, oh, like cylinders um, with holes in the middle that 
fit on different size needles. Um, honestly, this is probably something you could make yourself, if I'm honest. But I still found it valuable to just buy them for myself. And they're very, very cute. Um, you can see them in use right here on my socks. And then they do the job because I, before I was just sticking the needles back into the yarn ball, but that wasn't always the most practical thing, especially if like my yarn ball got very, very tiny. And I was just really nervous about, I hate losing s stitches. I, that's one thing about knitting that is different from crochet that like can get to me is like the live stitches thing. It like, it makes things more stressful when I mess up because it feels harder to fix and a lot harder to go back. Like when you rip back and then you're trying to put your needles back on and then you like lose it because it's getting too, that can stress me out a little bit. Um, steps I've taken to avoid this is if I think I'm gonna need to go back to a part cause I, I haven't made up my mind with what I've done there, I put in a lifeline and that's helped a lot. But anyways, yes, stitch stoppers, cute, practical, useful, 10 out of 10. Next is some yarn. Um, I'm trying not to buy a ton of yarn. I don't have a huge stash, but I do have a, a stash. I have one of those big plastic tubs, you know, the ones we all have, totally full of yarn and that's my stash. And um, But something I don't have is sock yarn. And what did I say earlier? I want to get into knitting socks. So I had to buy some sock yarns. Um, First up is this Patton's Croy sock. Um, I just got this at Hobby Lobby because I really, well, I don't know if I should get into it right now because there is this, I'm going to talk a little bit about my plants and stuff later, but basically I want to practice another just like vanilla, super simple sock um, before I get into something more complicated from like the 52 weeks of socks. So I bought this to try that with. Um, it's also just cute orange so yeah I got it grabbed a couple of these just to make another pair of vanilla socks for myself next yarn that I got is this Madeline Tosh sock in the color Moonstone oh this one is sorry oh I'm bad at this huh mid-century stripes which is fitting I like mid-century modern vibes this is the Mad Tosh um, Tosh sock yarn base. So it's, it's actually just hundred percent Merino wool, which confuses me a little bit. And I haven't looked into it. Um, you know, Mad, Mad Tosh is like a brand that I've heard a lot and I've seen it a lot. Um, and I was like, well, I want to get in thing. I sock yarn and this is the Mad Tosh sock, but there's no nylon or durable fiber in this. At least it doesn't say on the label. So is so should I not make socks out of this if I want them to be durable? That's I'm a little confused by that. I still think I will end up using this for socks because I have it and I want to. <laughs> um, they'll just have to be socks that I'm a little more careful with and that I'll just have to be okay if they wear a little faster than my other ones. Um, when I have other ones, because <laughs> again, I have not completed anything, but that's all right. It's a beautiful color. It's kind of tonal uh, and it's like a purpley, like a gray light purple. Very, very pretty. Um, and I chose this because I wanted to try something a little more complicated, something with a little bit more texture um, from the 52 weeks of socks. So I wanted to choose a little more simple yarn and something not like what I've already been using, right? So I've got like the pink and green, I've got orange. So it's like, I want something a little cooler. So like cooler toned. So that's, I went with this. Oh, the next sock. <laughs> oh, I mean the next um, yarn is for socks, but I'm super, super excited about it. Probably the most excited about it. And it is, bam. This sock set from the Little Wolf Knits that is specifically made for Nitty Natty's Sock Week 2022 knit-along. 
Um, so Nitty Natty is a YouTuber and knitter who every year puts on, or at least for the past few years, like that I can tell, puts on an, a, an event, a knit along event called Sock Week. It's kind of a play on Shark Week. Um, and the, I think in the past it's like coincided with the dates for Shark Week, but it won't necessarily this year. And the challenge is to knit a sock in a week or more, you know, and then you can like win, you can enter to win prizes and there's other events and stuff going on. So um, I love Nitty Natty and this year I really wanted to participate in um, Sock Week 2022 and that will be happening in July. So, um, so along with her event, she's got different sponsors, small businesses sponsoring the event that made products specifically for the event. And this was one of those by um, the Little Wolf Knits. Um, this is her sock set specifically made for sock week. It is her sunfish base, which is, um, I think just her sock base, 75%. Is it 75? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's 75, 25. So 75% superwash made of wool, 25% nylon as socks go. It's so pretty. Again, with this camera, I don't know how well I can show off products. I'll put in pictures, pretty, pretty pictures. Um, it's so pretty. So it's got a 100 gram skein here and then a, a, oh, this color is called Up at Dawn and this 50 gram mini skein is called Shark! Exclamation point, I believe. Yes, and they're so, so pretty. And I have yet to knit something, well, I still have yet to knit an entire sock. I currently have no plans to make any socks that have like a contrast heel and toe um, that that's, so that's the one I'm going to do with this. So super, super excited to participate in Sock Week 2022 and super excited to use this yarn from the Little Wolf Knits. So that was the, the Little Wolf Knits sock set. Sorry, I got interrupted by a phone call. Anyways, we trek on. What's my next acquisition? Oh, I think that's it. That's all my acquisitions. So it felt like I bought a lot more. Well, there's, I bought some like needles. Um, I kind of bought myself a whole sock set of circulars. Um, I got like between, I got two millimeter, 2.25 millimeter, 2.5 millimeter, another one. Cause I already had one, but I'd like to have two. Um, well, the one I have right now is a 16 inch cord or six, 16 centimeters. I, <laughs> I, I'm an American, right? So I use the imperial system for measurement, or at least I have um, most of my life, but I'm kind of trying to get into metric um, because everybody else uses that, you know? I just feel like we should get with the program. <laughs> so I think it's 16 centimeters. Um, so I bought some 24 centimeters. Maybe it is inches. No, it, it can't be inches. It's centimeters. Um, so I bought all these 24 inch, 24 centimeter circulars in all the sock sizes, two millimeter, like the tiny sizes. <sighs> 2.75. Yeah. And I already have some three millimeters that I'm using on my typical tank. That's the thing is because I'm new, I don't have as many things already, right? Like I don't have that many needles. I've kind of been buying it as my projects come. So I'd, 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 ideally I'd like to get a set soon, an interchangeable circular set. I just kind of got to pick which one. I probably will get a light like a set. Is that how you say it? Um, or put it on my Christmas wish list or something. <laughs> but because they're just so beautiful. <laughs> um, the ones I've been using so far are the carbon Carbon Knits by Knitter's Pride. And I do really like them. So those are some metal ones that I've been enjoying. I haven't really tried wood, so I should probably try it before I get a full wood set. But that's something I still gotta think about. So that's me and my needles. <laughs> um, next thing I wanna talk about is my plans and my dreams. First I wanna talk about plans because um, something that I did new for this month that I've really been enjoying is plan. 
<laughs> believe it or not, is plan my out my knitting and crocheting because um like I said, I kind of had it felt like I had a lot of whips, even though maybe to some people like five isn't a ton, but it felt like a lot. And I wanted to get to I wanted to get to a point where I was it was just a little bit more organized and intentional. And yeah, so I decided to plan and Nitty Natty again, who I've already mentioned previously, is somebody who's really inspired me to like start planning, like making an actual plan, just to kind of hold myself accountable. But also it's not that serious at the end of the day because it is a hobby. Um, but I I like being organized. I'm I'm one of those people, <laughs> even though it can be hard for me to stay organized because it, <laughs> my brain gets distracted very easily if you catch my drift. Um, but hey, here's my, this is my bullet journal that I haven't been using a ton, mostly just for my knitting plans. Um, I collaged this whole cover myself because I got this um, as a gift. It's like dotted, which is really nice, but I didn't, it was like silver and sparkly and I didn't like it. So I collaged it. Anyways, here are my knitting plans for June. Um, and it's been really interesting and kind of fun to work on my plans every week. So I've kind of been following Nitty Natty's guide and I can also link her video where she, it's a recent video she posted um, where she goes through how she plans her knitting. And I've kind of, I've def I, I have modeled this completely af off of that. And, you know, I think eventually it'll become a little bit more, you know, more my own, the more I work with it. But yeah, so for my, like, my current whips this month, I had um, those cozies I was making for my, um, the mothers of my life, and then my typical tank and my socks, and then <coughs> some new things. I, I, I've been counting my mood blanket squares as one square as one project, um, just to keep track of it a little bit better. So... I knew I needed to cast on or start my April, March, and May squares this month. And then um, once I am done with that pink and green pair of socks, I'm hoping to cast on another pair of socks with the Pat and Croy sock yarn. Um, we'll see if I get, get to that this month. I'm not sure, but it's it's a hope, you know? And so I want to finish those croquet, I finished those crochet cozies and I wanted to also finish um, my tank, my socks and my March and April square at the very least. So, so far I finished the cozies and I finished my March square. So I still have my typical tank, those socks and my April um, square, my mood blanket April square to finish. So I'm halfway through my finish list, actually, now that I'm looking at it, which is kind of cool. Um, I've been like hitting milestones per each week. So like I have like the little schedule down here and keeping in mind like, oh, when I might want to work on this project less this week and another project more this week has been really, 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 really nice to already have figured out. Something I haven't been using a ton is the maintenance portion where it's like, okay, at lunchtime, I'll work on this and dun, 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 dun. Um, my schedule isn't very regular. Um, my work schedule is changing all the time. And I, <laughs> again, I have a brain. <laughs> I don't want to say it because I don't have a diagnosis, but there, you know, there's a neurodivergent trait that runs in my family that I'm very, fairly certain I also have. And so it makes sticking to routines a little harder um, because of just moods fluctuating and energy levels fluctuating and interests fluctuating all the time. So I find the maintenance part a little harder to, cause like, I'm kind of just like, what do I feel like on working at lunch that day? I just kind of pick it, which is fine because that's the way it's supposed to work, right? Like it's not supposed to be hard and fast, which Nitty Natty talks about in her video. You should go watch that. I don't know why I'm explaining all this, but this thought it was interesting. And then like over here, this is, I added this part where I'm kind of 
detailing my actual plan week by week. So I have the milestones here, but this is my plan to get it done th throughout the week. So like my mood blanket, I'm, I um, make two rows a day at least. Um, if I know I have Monday and Tuesday off, I'll plan to get the most challenging things done on Monday and Tuesday. Cause then I know the rest of the more mindless knitting, like in the round stocking that I can get done in the evenings after work or even at my lunch break at work and stuff. So, which is kind of maintenance knitting now that I think about it. <laughs> Anyways, so that's something I've been doing this month that's new for me that I've really, really been enjoying. Um, I recommend it if you're someone who likes lists, even if they're hard to keep to, you know, make it something fun for yourself. Put it in a cute journal if that helps. Um, some, so some other knitting plans, or I, rather dreams, I guess. Our dreams is a bit wistful, but like I said, I really want to make some more socks. Um, once I'm done with the socks I'm making right now, like I said, it's a reinforced heel flap and gusset is the heel that I was um, making because that's the one in the tutorial. After I'm done with that sock, I want to try making a sock... I might change up the cuff, the ribbing and the cuff, because I tried a two by two now, so I kind of want to see how I like maybe a one by one or a two by one or something. And then I want to try a different type of heel, um, probably a fish lips kiss heel. Um, so that's what I'm going to use that patent croy to try out a different heel. I want to try it all. And then um, and then I want to make something for the 52 weeks of socks with that Mad Tosh um, sock yarn. Those are my plans for those socks. And, oh, and obviously the Little Wolf Knits in July, I'll be participating in Sock Week 2022 and making socks with that. So that's a plan that's set for that whole week. I'll be monogamously knitting on that sock, maybe two, if I get a little crazy. <laughs> and then, sorry, I'm looking at my notes. It's probably annoying. We'll do this. Something else I wanna make is another garment like a top or potentially even a sweater once I'm done with the typical tank like it is June so it's kind of more like summery mood I'm not necessarily someone who like only creates according to seasons but it's something to keep in mind um I have some stash yarn that I have in mind to use for my next garment or top whatever I create the issue is is I only have what sucks is if I'm going to make like a sweater, I, I don't necessarily have a sweater quantity, so I'd have to buy more yarn to get rid of it, <laughs> which feels counterintuitive, but you gotta do what you gotta do. It's beautiful and I want to use it. So my other stash yarn, not that I'm necessarily on like a road to get rid of, I'm not on a journey to like get rid of my stash. Like I know some other people are, because again, I don't have that much stash. Um, a lot of the yarn I had as a teenager, I left back in my home state when I moved um, for college. And so my stash has kind of been very baby for the past couple of years because I haven't been crocheting as much the past couple of years. Um, I hate this road. I live on it so loud. Anyways, um, because I've fallen back in love with it recently. And so, um, honestly, most of, and most of the yarn I have is like bulky leftover from blankets and stuff. So it's kind of harder to use those for garments and stuff. I'll probably use them for hats or, I have some ideas on how to use like scraps to make cool scrappy blankets and things like that. But yeah, I want to make another top sweater. I've never, oh, another, I've never made a sweater. So something I want to try. <laughs> um, something else I want to make fairly soon, I might make this month, depending on how, where I'm at with my other projects, is I bought the Nitty Natties. <laughs> Some people are just going to come up over and over again because I like them. Um, she has some yarn cozies. She, well, I think she's just now coming out with a crochet version, but she previously has a knit version that I want to make. Um, I think it'll be good to, again, get rid of some stash yarn that I have that's like 
a mystery fiber. It's like handed down to me from, I don't even remember where. So I don't know what the fibers are. I think it's sock yarn, but I can't be sure. So I think that'd be good. Um, make some cozies out of that to get some use out of that. And plus, I think I would get a lot of use out of yarn cozies. So something on my list. The um, last thing that's I can think of that's on my like plans, hopes, dreams is recently um, Knitting for Olive is doing is doing right now a knit along for the dot sweater by Knitting for Olive. And it's so pretty. It's I'll put up a picture. It's so pretty is all I can say. And I every I because there's a knit along happening for it right now, I keep seeing it on my feed and I'm just falling more and more in love with it. <laughs> and I need to make that sweater. Um, I'm not there yet, obviously. Um, so that's something that's like in the back of my mind right now that I want to make. I'm more like in the fall winter time for myself, but I will make that sweater. Mark my words, because it's so, so pretty. Um, uh, I'm just thinking about it right now. I'd have to decide what colors to use. And, ugh. Anyways. It's beautiful. You should check out that hashtag if you haven't already on Instagram. It's a super cool sweater. Um, that's most of what I had to share with you today. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me if you made it this far. I'm sorry if things are disorganized or all over the place. Um, again, I'm new to this, doing my best. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about like my intention with starting this because I don't know. I just thought <laughs> because the whole point of me making this and putting myself out there is because I have been so inspired by this community lately and being a recent college graduate and also a creative professionally even if I don't have a job right now that is technically in the field I studied. I'm still a professional, technically. I've done jobs um, for design. Um, and especially after just, just finishing a design course, you know, I'm, I'm extremely burnt out um, creatively. And especially when it comes to more traditional forms of art. Like, I love to draw and paint. I haven't drawn or painted a single thing in a while and I know I'll come back to it eventually um <laughs> I don't know why I feel myself getting emotional this is also I'd really really love in the future to talk more about like my experience as an artist and somebody who went to art school you know and just open up a little bit more about that um so let me know if you'd be interested in some sort of knit and chat or something like that or answering your questions about art school um if you have any, I don't know if you'd be interested, but yeah, I'm just, I'm tired. <laughs> and it, it, it was a hard course, you know, I went year round. Um, there was no more than two weeks off of school at a time or three, I think at the longest and for like three and a half years. And I took a couple extra semesters because I failed some classes and I had to make them up. And so it took me a little bit longer to graduate than the rest of my peers, which is okay. Um, if you're somebody who's taking longer than you're supposed to, totally okay. Totally. But yeah, I just, especially as somebody who like a lot of my identity is tied to creativity and creating beautiful things, um, being burnt out from the things that I love, like painting and art and design is really, really tough. And knitting and crochet is something that puts a fire back inside of me. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. It's, it's, it's different than drawing and painting and designing, right? Um, Cause it's, it's making something with your bare hands, which obviously, I mean, so is drawing and painting, but it's something that has a, a little bit more of a practical use, right? It goes on your body and it's in your home and you're using it every day you know, and there's something a little bit more challenging 
about it. And it's still creative at the same time is the thing. It's I get to like think about how things work and constructions and math, even though I say I don't like it. Sometimes it's kind of satisfying to figure something out math wise. Um, and I don't know, but at the same time, it allows me to explore my creativity in ways that I really haven't recently or ever maybe um, in choosing yarns and choosing patterns and making patterns fit for and work for you and self-drafting patterns and things like that. Um, even though I've, I'm nowhere near ready to self-draft anything knitted, clearly as I'm a beginner, um, I do freehand crochet quite often and that's pretty cool but yeah I'm not totally sure where I was going with this but basically I've really really I I've loved knitting podcasts and Instagrams and live streams and I've loved being around that community that I kind of want to be in it even more and connect with other people who just love making things and creating things and I just want to make some friends. <laughs> I know that sounds really lonely. Um, I mean, we're all a little bit lonely right now, right? After the state of the world and especially I was going through all that and also college and I'm work, I was working at the same time as going to college. So I had no time to myself and no energy to socialize and no access to socialization for a while because of what happened in the past few years. And so this, I guess this is me putting myself out there and hoping I can connect to some other people who are interested into the same things as me or yeah, I guess that's just it. <laughs> um, so again, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, thank you, you know, um, and I hope to see you again. I really do. Yeah, <laughs> this is kind of a clunky sign off, but it's genuine and I kind of like that. So I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.